The HP Omen 15 was the second best Ryzen gaming laptop I tested last year, and now that the new 2021 model's here, it's time to see what the differences are. The biggest change comes down to the specs. This one has AMD's new Ryzen 5000 processors and Nvidia RTX 3000 graphics. And as 1440p screens have recently become more of a thing, that's also an option with the Omen 15 as well. Now although I've got the 8-core 5800H and RTX 3070 configuration here, HP are also sending over the 6-core 5600H and Nvidia Nvidia 3060 option too, so I'll be able to compare both of those in an upcoming video. And honestly, I think that one makes the most sense, as the 3060 model starts at around 1120 US dollars. But you can check out other specs and updated prices with the links down in the description. The gaming performance with my 3070 model was decent, but like last year, you can't disable Optimus, so there's missed gaming performance as a result. The RTX 3070 is also limited to a 100 watt power limit, and while playing games or running a CPU plus GPU stress test at the same time, I found the processor would only run up to 35 watts. Most other Ryzen gaming laptops will run it up to 45 watts in that scenario. So again, potentially performance being left on the table. Now that's not to say the gaming performance from the 3070 model is bad or anything. It'll still play pretty much any modern game at high settings perfectly fine, as you can see in this video over here where I've tested 13 different games. It's just that when compared against other laptops with the same specs, it is a little behind due to those things. So it'll come down to price difference as to whether or not the Omen 15 remains competitive with alternatives. Hardware specs aside though, the new 2021 Omen 15 is basically in the same chassis as last year, with some small minor improvements. The first of which are these little stands on either sides of the keyboard. Both last year's model and this year's model have a fairly flexible screen, but last year even with the lid closed there was still quite a bit of flex to it, so if you had the laptop in your bag or something it could get pushed down and potentially bend the screen, which I'm guessing is why these are now here. They're little standoffs that just help reduce the amount of flex on the sides. There's still quite a fair bit of flex in the middle, but only if you're going out of your way and pushing for it but on the sides, there's probably a bit less than the last gen model. So it's by no means completely removing the flex, but it does help reduce it. The other thing I noticed is that Wi-Fi 6 is now soldered to the motherboard and cannot be upgraded. In last year's model with the 4800H, I could take out the Wi-Fi and upgrade it, though I'm pretty sure the Intel 10th gen model was the same as this in that Wi-Fi was soldered. So it seems like that's just the route HP have taken. But otherwise, pretty much everything else inside is upgradable, including those two M.2 slots and the two memory slots. One of the main things that I personally didn't like was this front edge could feel quite sharp when typing. The corners are pretty sharp feeling too. It might just be because I have bigger hands so they kind of have to sit on that edge while typing. It's hard to say, I can't get smaller hands to retest it. But in theory with smaller hands they wouldn't need to sit as far back as larger hands so that might not be as much of an issue. That was the case last generation too so that's nothing new. Which leads me into one of the main points. Although the Omen 15 was the second best Ryzen gaming laptop of last year, they haven't really done that much to improve things. I mean yeah, I know it does take R&D dollars to develop these things so if you can just simply update the CPU, GPU, and screen and call it a day, then hey, might as well if you've already got a fairly good model. But at the same time, I feel like there has been some missed opportunity to make improvements, like say disabling Optimus. Other laptops like the Legion 5 Pro from Lenovo do actually offer some nice improvements over last generation. And if other companies like Asus and MSI for example are taking that route too, then it's possible the Omen 15 could get left behind. We'll just have to wait and see once I get more models in for testing. So yeah, apart from refreshed specs and some minor tweaks, there's not really too much different with this year's Omen 15. You can check out my full review over on the main channel if you want far more detailed information. Check out this video if you want to see how well the Omen 15 compares against other laptops in games. And I'll also be comparing this against the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro soon. So make sure you're subscribed to both of my channels for those upcoming videos.